How is Maryland different from its surrounding states when it comes to firearm restrictions? Primary surrounding states, Delaware, they're more restrictive in Maryland on one instance. They require background checks for both private sales of long guns and handguns. Maryland only requires background checks for private sales of handguns. Mm -hmm. uh, West Virginia and Virginia require no background checks for private sales. Uh, and Pennsylvania, it's either no or just on handguns. As far as licenses go, West Virginia, you just go in and run the same instant background check for the federal government for long guns or handguns. Well, uh, Virginia is the same way, but requires a license to carry. Pennsylvania, same way, license to carry. Delaware does not require a license to carry, because I believe I just looked that up. Um, and conceal, I'm sorry, Delaware con license to conceal carry. And then Maryland, of course, requires the HQL. In the year 2013, 106 Maryland lawmakers and then Governor Martin O'Malley passed Senate Bill 281 into law, commonly known as the Firearm Safety Act of 2013. This law makes it impossible for Maryland residents to legally purchase, rent, or receive a handgun without paying a $50 license application fee to the Maryland State Police. Handgun rentals are still allowed without an HQL as long as the firearms are kept on the owner's property. In addition to the application fee, Marylanders must pay for electronic fingerprinting as well as training. The license fee must be paid with a Visa or MasterCard through the internet. All other forms of payment, including cash, are not accepted. In Murdoch v. Pennsylvania, the Supreme Court found that a state may not impose a charge for the enjoyment of a right granted by the U.S. Constitution. What is the process to purchase a handgun in the state of Maryland? Active and retired Maryland law enforcement, federal law enforcement, and military. They're exempt. If you already own a fire handgun and you say you moved here or you had one before the HQL became a law, mm -hmm. then you're exempt from the training portion and you would still have to uh, get live scan fingerprints and then do your HQL process online on the state police website. In Harper versus Virginia Board of Elections, the U.S. Supreme Court found that Virginia's poll tax was unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. In Cox versus New Hampshire, the Supreme Court permitted fees for actual cost of regulating a constitutional activity. So the question is, what are the actual costs of giving citizens the right to keep and bear arms? Shouldn't it just be the cost of the weapons? Because after all, Maryland citizens don't directly pay for the machines or for the paper and ink when they vote or register to vote. Isn't a voter registration card the equivalent of a handgun qualification license card? With 90,999 active HQLs out there, at $50 each, that's $4.5 million more dollars that the state government has for its general fund. Handgun qualification licenses must also be renewed for $20. Gun rights organization Maryland Shall Issue filed a lawsuit in the fall of 2016. It challenges many of SB 281's provisions. It took six months for SB 281 to go into effect after it was signed into law by Governor Martin O'Malley. Nearly 18 months after the lawsuit was filed, only motions had been heard in front of a federal court. The government tried to get the lawsuit dismissed, but a judge denied most of their motions. As of this documentary's release, the lawsuit is in the discovery phase. It's time for Maryland lawmakers and judges to respect the U.S. Constitution and Maryland's Constitution. Gun ownership is a right, not a privilege. In Carrington v. Rash, the Supreme Court found that Texas could not deny a military member their right to vote.
This is because of the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. Because regular Maryland citizens are treated differently than the police and military, that doesn't seem like the laws are being equally applied.